Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. For this week's projects, I'm going to do this segmented bowl. It is of apricot and walnut with a, an experimental technique where I actually took a set of rings and sliced them and then inserted a walnut spine in it so that it shows at an angle. It's uh, something I wanted to try. I've not seen it before and it actually shows an inside and outside but has a definite stop at a ring. One other thing of note on this is that the base here looks like it is solid however it is inset into a segmented ring to preserve the appearance of segmentation all the way up. But since solid rings can also be a problem with expansion and contraction this is actually a self-made plywood lamination so that it controls the expansion and can be safely put into a segmented vessel. So let's make this segmented apricot and walnut bowl. To get started I glued up seven segmented rings of 12 segments each. Six are cherry while the largest, the seventh, is walnut. I also took a couple of scrap pieces of cherry and glued them together to make a wider piece of scrap. After mounting the wood to a faceplate, I sawed it to make my own three-ply cherry plywood for the base. I'm going to do something special with the top three rings of cherry. To do this, I need to glue these three rings together. I also need to mount the top walnut ring to a faceplate. I'm using a 3D printed centering stack to position the ring. This also enables me to immediately turn the perimeter of the ring. But turning quickly leads to interesting glue patterns as the squeeze out spreads with the centrifugal force. Meanwhile, I also need to start from the base by gluing the base ring to a faceplate. Off camera, I will mortise in the plywood for the base ring. The glue is dry enough to trim the interior and exterior of the three rings that will get special treatment shortly. I love turning the continuous side grain on segmented rings. For the special treatment, I have mounted a tall fence to the table saw's miter gauge. The rings are clamped to a fence, making sure the clamps are well above the saw blade. The miter gauge is set at 30 degrees. Each cut is 120 degrees from the previous cut. I have made sure the cut depth is less than the ring thickness to avoid clamping issues during the next step. Then glue in strips of walnut. The saw kerf is 1 8 of an inch. I milled the walnut to easily fit inside the kerf. After the glue dries, I trimmed back the excess wood. Then back to the table saw to cut the next set of kerfs with the opposite angle. This is the same process as the first set. I decided to be conservative in the positioning. And glue in the final set of walnut strips. When I trimmed the outside of the walnut ring, the glue was very fresh and I could not trim the interior. Time to do it now, before the next rings are glued on. Then glue on the three special three ring set.
With that out of the way, I'm back to building from the bottom. With a minimum of glue time, I'm adding the next two rings. I let all the rings set inside the warmer house for a couple of hours. The shop is too cool for the glue to set reliably. Now the bowl is in two pieces, top and bottom. Both pieces are still mounted to face plates. The bottom piece is on a bearing mounted live tailstock chuck adapter so that it can revolve without being secured to the top piece. Since I did not formalize plans for this bowl, I now trim the exterior to a pleasing curve. While I'm doing this, I'm aware of the internal diameters that must be respected. Since the pieces are not attached, I can take a quick peek to be sure the interior is working also. Beware of funnels, then continue to refine the exterior. With the exterior profile established, I separated the two pieces to work on following the top interior. For this, I am preferring a heavy box scraper due to the reverse angle. Then swap the face plates to hollow the bottom portion. This piece more resembles a bowl, except that it is all side grain. My large bowl gouge works great here. Side grain is sweet turning. Then glue in the two pieces together. I let the glue dry overnight. With the glue well set, I can reverse the mount to the bottom face plate. Now to part off the top face plate, then proceed to refine the interior of the bowl. With the wide opening, I found it convenient to go around the lathe and work from the opposite side with a round nose scraper. I have a remote kill switch, so I can safely work from this side. Then a final trim to the exterior. Most of my cuts here are shear cutting with my bowl gouge. Then a thorough sanding inside and out. Finally the foot. The base is still mounted to a faceplate. The top is in coal jaws. The live tailstock chuck adapter removes the typical excitement after severing the last few grains. Then finish and sign the foot. At last, walnut oil makes the grain pop. I view this bowl as a successful but conservative experiment. It gives me confidence to push the frontiers of this technique in other segmented projects. What variations can you envision? Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield for safety anytime that lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video. Be wise in these COVID times, get your shot, and count your blessings. I think I can see a light at the end of this tunnel.